Good morning, y'all. It's Sunday morning, August 21st. My name's Rachel, and I'm gardening for butterflies on the Alabama Gulf Coast in Zone 9A. And um, I'm so excited about showing y'all what's been happening in the garden. We've been having so many gardening adventures, like turtles and frogs and um, snakes. Oh, and I just saw a butterfly go by. <laughs> uh, monarch butterflies has come, have come back, although I didn't get any videos of them. But um, I think it was uh, two days ago, I had an actual rainbow over the garden. And that was super special. Um, I got some video of it. It doesn't do it justice, but um, I was sitting on the front porch and I noticed that the light, the quality of the light was different. It was like pinky, yellow, golden. And I was like, what is happening? And I couldn't see in the sky um, from that side what was happening. So I came out to the backyard and there was an actual rainbow over the garden. It's super special. So I can't wait to share that with y'all. But um, here we go. So y'all know, I really get a kick out of symmetry. I do try to have it happening somewhere. It's not always possible, but um, something cool that just kind of dawned on me this week is um, something special that God did, because I didn't do it. Um, I gotta show y'all this. Okay, so over on this side, I've got white vinca. Do y'all see that white vinca right there? And then over on this side, I have white pentas. Now, the white pentas were in a pot with that duranta, and I planted it here, and I didn't expect the white pentas to even live, but they did, and uh, they look really good, but what's so cool about these um, white vinca over here is I did not plant them. I, I actually never even, I never planted them. What happened is I had some vinca in the front growing near um, the pot where uh, my sweet Afton rose, which is right here, was when I had it out in the front yard about three years ago. Um, and some white vinca seeds must have fallen into the pot with the roses and then they grew in the pot with them and I, I just let them because they didn't seem to be hurting anything and so when I planted out the, the rose right there oops when I planted out the roses there were uh, some just one little vinca in there and they have seeded themselves and grown all right here so when I noticed that, I was like, oh, wow, God, that's just so special. You get me. You know me. And he was like, Rachel, you need some white right here. You need white right there to go with the white over there. And he's just so perfect. He's so perfect, and he knows me so well. And uh, he just knows what's going to delight me, which I just appreciate so much. Oh, and there is a hummingbird right now. Let's see. You see him right there? Him's going to the feeder. That brings me to another uh, kind of story. So I like to sit out here and watch the humming, hummingbirds. I have about four of them, I think. And they all kind of sound a little bit different. And one of them, and I think it's this guy, he's it's a juvenile, juvenile male, and him's him sassy. He's very loud. You can hear him, he was fussing he gets irritated when I'm out here and so I'll be sitting here and one day he came up and he got like right in my face and oh here's a different one that one's more quiet anyway he got right in my face and he was just like what are you doing even doing here you know he was really sassy and I just thought to myself my goodness listen here you little stinker I put that feeder there for you you know, um, it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. And I put it here so I can enjoy you and uh, for your benefit. But he wanted to act like I was, you know, taking up his time and in his way. And it just made me think about God and how God has given us everything that we have. And sometimes we're just too busy or we just feel like, uh, uh, it's too much trouble, you know, to pray and to read his word and to spend time with him. But the whole reason that we're alive and the whole reason that we have anything, even our next breath and our next heartbeat, is because he's giving it to us. And so he deserves 
just all of our praise and our time. And um, so anyway, that was some thoughts that I had while I was in the garden. And uh, I'm just so thankful that God has given me the opportunity to have such beauty, so much beauty in my life because I just really, I think almost everything that I do is just me trying to get back to the garden, just pretty much the Garden of Eden. <laughs> um, I don't feel comfortable in buildings. I feel, I feel irritable and sad and I just feel, uh, I don't know, imprisoned, but mm, out here, this is where I feel like I really belong. But um, I've got some things that I've done. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell or not. I did have to pull some stuff out. Uh, the armadillo has just been really getting on my last nerve. I'm going to have to dig this up and put it in this pot. That's why I have this pot right here. So I'm going to dig up this echinacea because the armadillo is just going all over the garden and digging some major holes like... I'm really going to, I'm going to, let's see, I can zoom in. He's almost dug this rose up. This is, this is my, um, and it's not looking too good anyway. So this is that big mama rose. And I do have some buds over here on it, but um, I'm going to have to, I don't know, I've been saying it, but I really mean it. I am. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to dig it up sometime this week and put it in a big pot um, to rescue it. Otherwise, I think it's probably going to end up not making it so that's why i also dug up this echinacea that had started from seed and this one too had in another part of the garden and so i got some um new zinnias right here and i dug up some more of that uh wishbone flower that had started from seed and you can see how that one is just so awesome but um one thing that i thought i would do rather than just kind of going around is I thought I would show y'all my method and by method I'm putting that in quotation marks because it's not really much of a method but um of how I keep up with the tags from um and and from the stuff that I planted so I'm going to show y'all that right now okay this is it this is how I do it <laughs> Um, I went and had some, uh, like an archaeological dig in the potting shed and found all the tags of things that I planted in a frenzy this summer. And I just kind of put them in order, so it's in order of, of when I planted them. The clematis, uh, it's just, I don't know which one it is, but it's still alive, but of course it hasn't bloomed. And uh, there's only one of them, the other one died. So I was going to get some of these tags and just kind of tell y'all some stories about some of the things that I have been growing this year. I love blue flowers. I love them, love them, love them. And I think I have probably have like five or six of these things growing. And see, it's gotten so thick that uh, probably by next year I'm going to take it out and cut it in half and put another half in another pot. But that is this right here. It's the Blue My Mind Evolvulus Hybrid from Proven Winners and these things bloom and the bees love them and I can grow them without killing them. I have a ton of them. I would really recommend you buying them if you love blue flowers. I wanted to show some bees on them, but um, I don't know where the bees went. Right now they've decided to all get on the um, uh, salvia, so there they are. I want to show you just the regular purple Mexican heather, which is lovely. And I have not treated it. Um, I've treated it with disdain because it grows so easily here. I shouldn't have because it is a lovely bush. Maybe I have disdained it because I've actually not seen um, any bees on it. That could be the reason why. But now I want to show you my new favorite. And you know what? I don't even care if I don't see bees on it, but maybe there will be a bee on it in a second. This is white Mexican heather. I'm going to show you the tag. Here it is, white Mexican heather. And see, don't you love like the kind of chartreuse of the leaves and the tiny white blooms? And I've just grown in appreciation of white this year because, uh, but I just love that. So I've got two in that pot right there. 
with the vinca and then i've got two over there that i planted you know what they probably need more sun i should probably put them somewhere else but um those i am going to intersperse throughout the garden next year because i love them i love the little spots of sunshine and white flowers and y'all know I do be loving this coleus. Ooh, it's so huge. And I found the tag so I can tell y'all what it is. So if you want some, you can has. And this is what it is. It's got a long name, Color Blaze Royale Pineapple Brandy by Proven Winders. Ooh, love it. Okay, now the Biden's Alba is the semi-native flower. You see it everywhere. It goes crazy. I've been yanking it out. I just can't. I, it seeds so easily that I, for a while there, and the bees love it, and I thought, oh, you know, I'll let some go. But I just can't. I don't have enough time for it. So, but I got this Biden's pink right here. That's Biden's pink. And it's, I was kind of scared. I didn't know what it was going to do. It seems to be behaving. It hasn't even really bloomed a whole lot. But, you know, I don't think it's gotten a lot of sun. But I was going to show you the tag for it in case you ever come across it. Uh, that's what it's supposed to be. Biden's pretty in pink. It's supposed to have a lot of blooms. So far, you know, I'm, I'm not going to rip it out. I'm going to keep it um, and see what happens. Um, I haven't seen any seedlings from it, so it seems to, to be, um, have some manners. So we're going to keep it. Y'all see this basil right here? That's, that's basil. It's like a globe basil that's just what i've been calling it i didn't know what the name of it was but um you know what i love about it i mean it just grows so round and it's got those pretty pretty flowers on it it smells amazing it does attract um uh, pollinators and it's so you know what i think i think i'm going to try to use it as and make somewhat of a border with it you know make it look like maybe a knot garden type thing but it's going to show y'all what its actual name is aristotle basil um yeah i love it i want to have a ton of that next year see that giant green bush type shrub looking thing this right here it hasn't bloomed yet i'm i'm kind of losing my patience with it i'm like what are you even doing it's huge and I was expecting something out of it and haven't gotten it and I just I don't know what to think about it um it is a native it's a native plant and I'm going to show you the tag that I have so you can see what it's called rutabecchia lacinata cut leaf coneflower I'm like where where are the cut leaf coneflowers show me the flowers I don't know I don't know don't know what I'm going to do with it but uh there it is if it ever flowers, I'll let you know. If you need a ground cover and you don't mind it taking over, well, then grow this sweet potato vine, that purple sweet potato vine. I think that's two plants. It could be three. And actually, because it's, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that how, how um, mannerly it's been. I think, I think the armadillos have been taking care of it and, uh, keeping it in check but i was going to show y'all what it's called it's this sweet georgia deep purple sweet potato vine um i i don't know if i'm going to keep it or not we'll see here's something funny about this um rock and fuchsia um salvia uh, i was going to say bad things about it but now that i'm looking at it i uh maybe it's because um I'm not sure it, it maybe it needs some food but you can see it's kind of really dark green right here and it's kind of light green right there I'm liking the light green and I'm wondering if maybe it needs to be fed and that's why it's looking kind of pale like that but I actually like it like that because you can see the flowers on it and and there are more flowers on it right now too because throughout the summer it just seemed to be blah and bland and it was just kind of a non-entity and I wasn't really I was wasn't enjoying it but there's so much color on it right now and I, I couldn't tell you why I don't know but um I'm liking it now so now I'm not sure I was gonna say like two thumbs down but mm, now I'm giving it maybe a thumb up but I'm gonna show you the tag rock and fuchsia 
and y'all asked me about this grass right here isn't it pretty i love it in front of this wasabi coleus um and I, I didn't know the name of it but i found the little tag so now i can tell y'all officially what it is it is fireworks fountain grass and uh i i'm i'm loving it i want more of it i love the um green and the pink and the little fluffy tails and uh, and it seems to behave so it's all the things that I want in a fountain grass and none of the bad things so I would totally recommend it this Rose of Sharon um, I planted mm, last year and it got eaten down to a nub by deer this was before I had the fence and also it was completely shaded out by the salvia amistad that grew like a tree and so it didn't get enough sun and it didn't really get a good start in life and so now it's making a comeback and i'm proud of it and uh, it looks like it's about five feet tall and um i think i think it's going to make it but uh, i don't know what kind it is because i got it um at pal fox market from one of the guys there but i'm really liking it but i'm going to show you another uh, rose of sharon now this sad little squat little thing right here is a Rose of Sharon. Oh, and look, it's got a bloom. <gasps> That's so pretty. Let's get in here and see it. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty. So it can bloom and there are lots of buds on it. I'm, I'm gonna dig it up. I'm probably gonna dig it up today because it needs, it's gonna need more sun. I, it, I planted it here in the back because it says on the tag that it gets like eight feet tall. But literally, even when it did have sun, it didn't grow. But um, I'm going to dig it up, put it in a bigger pot, give it a lot of sun, um, because uh, it's, it should be, it should grow very well. I'm going to show you the tag. This is it. It's Blue Chiffon Proven Winners. And um, I, I want to give it more of an opportunity. Because I really did want, what I wanted was, you know, that gorgeous, gorgeous blue in the garden. So this, this uh, right there that uh, coleus that came up from seed and it's kind of shading it out too so and there's been a pot right here I'm kind of clearing this out a little bit and look this is my um clematis oh there's some spiders it's doing well but it hasn't bloomed but I'm I'm thankful that it seems to be happy living back here we'll see if we can manage to keep it alive see this coneflower it's called cheyenne spirit and i discovered something incredible about it yesterday that i did not know it has a gorgeous scent i don't think well i i don't know if i've even sniffed coneflowers i guess maybe i didn't think that they would smell good but this one smells incredible so y'all try sniffing your coneflowers and seeing what happens because i can't even describe this one i want to say it's it's kind of honey smelling but it's also perfumey it's just mm, yummy the beauty berry bush that the birds have planted for me in the front yard <clears throat> has um has got beauty berries on it i've got to find some that are super purple for you like maybe in the state park so you can see how gorgeous they are but this is them before they turn and uh it's super exciting to have it just growing here because i wanted one but um i never I never uh, took the opportunity to either try to dig one up or try to plant one. So I'm just so thankful to have this right here. God just knew what I wanted and he was like, hey y'all, go, go over there and put that in her yard. And I'm just saying, thank you, God. That's so sweet of you. When I planted that corn in those pots back here, I also planted some um, butterfly pea uh, vine seeds with the corn because I was hoping that they would climb up the corn and they did but the corn just kind of got gross and sad and shabby so I had to mostly rip it out and just push the pots up against this um, this uh, fence and I was going to show y'all uh, I I tried I mean because they are edible I ate one of these and I'm going to show y'all that you too can eat these um, flowers look at the perfection of this bloom I mean just lovely I need to pick them and make some tea and show you all that too but um, I just haven't gotten that far so the blooms are really tasty 
they are. Um, in fact, they're the tastiest bloom that I've had. I mean, they're sweet. Problem is, there's like a little bit of an aftertaste that, um, but I haven't gotten to it yet because um, I ate one the other day and, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's the best flower ever and I wanted to eat bunches of them. But um, there is like a little bit of an aftertaste. Um, but yeah, it'd be really cool to like put it on top of salads to impress people. They're like, what, we gotta eat some flowers um, and make tea. So I need to do that. Look, my fingers, can you see that they're blue? I mean, the, the coloring in it is super saturated. But uh, anyway, I would recommend growing these because they love living here, y'all. The orange tree is just full of oranges. But see these right here? I'm probably gonna have to cut these back. Every time I walk through here, they knock me in the head and I'm about sick of it. I am sick of being beaten to death by these oranges. <laughs> Y'all, look at this darling little baby box turtle. My neighbor found it on her porch. Hems is lively. Hems, Hems wants to go bye-bye. I'm gonna put him down and let him go in my jungle area. Okay, anyone who thinks turtles are slow, you gotta watch this because here's a little baby boxwood turtle that we just found a few minutes ago. I'm gonna put him down and Hems is gonna run away like crazy. Oops, wait, wait, wait. Let's back up. Oh, well, there he goes. He did run away like crazy. Go, baby, go. Go, baby. He's hiding. Okay, you can hide. Y'all, thanks so much for coming along with me in my garden. I hope next week that I will have some monarch caterpillars or eggs or something. I'm going to start watching the um, milkweed because they, uh, they're back. And uh, so I'm excited about that. I want to raise some so they can go to Mexico. Um, but y'all have a wonderful weekend uh, or day, week, uh, whatever. Um, and I can't wait to find out what's happening in y'all's gardens. I love hearing about it so much. Um, I'm very curious. I gotta know. But God bless y'all. Y'all have a great day. Bye.